Dragon Table, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I am going to do a tutorial on Super Fight, although it doesn't really need one because it's not very complicated. Um, this is more just to promote the game. Uh, it was a game that was successfully kickstarted last year and has now been so popular that it's currently um, on back order on its third printing. And uh, if you like this, what it looks like in this video, and you want to get it, uh, I would highly recommend pre-ordering the third printing now, otherwise you're going to be waiting for the fourth printing. Um, so it's, it's the new party game. Um, it, this, I think, is going to be the, not, re not a replacement for Cards Against Humanity, because nothing can replace that, but it's in that vein. Um, it's not quite as offensive <laughs> as Cards Against Humanity. Um, but it is pretty fantastic. I haven't even played it yet. I just got it today. I just really wanted to do a video showing you this hilarious game. So the base game of Super Fight comes with a deck of white cards that are your fighters and a deck of black cards that are abilities. Abilities. Some of these abilities are strengths and some of them are weaknesses. Um, everyone, and this is a, a party game, so it's, that means three players and up uh, should be playing this. Um, probably the more the better. And um, everyone gets three cards, and I'm just going to... We'll just do imaginary. Imaginary people are playing the game. It's my favorite kind of card friends is the imaginary kind. So let's say we've got four people playing the game. Everyone draws... Three cards, three white cards, five black cards. And I know I am not properly dealing. Guess what? Deal with it. Mwahaha. I'm just doing this as an example. You pick someone to go first. Again, take it outside, have a fight. I don't care how you decide who goes first. But whoever goes first is going to be the ref for that round. And they're not actually going to play from their deck. They're going to draw one random card from the white deck and two random black cards. And that is going to be the opponent for everyone else. So let's see what we get. We get Abraham Lincoln, who throws knives and has frost breath. Uh, that's uh, pretty terrifying, actually. Um, that sounds like a sounds like a book I read, uh, possibly. So now what happens is everybody except the ref. Let's say I'm the ref, so my cards won't be used this game, this this turn. You go into your hand and you try to come up with a uh, with something that's going to beat Abraham Lincoln throwing knives with frost breath. Uh, so I'm gonna. This player is gonna throw Canada at it. So he's gonna say, okay, I, let's let's do. Canada, and um, hmm. let's say Canada can read minds. So that's what he's going to play, and then and this person is doing the same thing at the same time, um, and he's going to throw out, uh, oh, he's going to throw out Marshmallow Man, because that's a very large character, um, and what does uh, Marshmallow Man do? A uh, marshmallow man throws spears. That sounds like it might be an, an, a good fight for Abraham Lincoln. Cross breath with uh, knife throwing. And this guy over here, oh, this guy's going old school. He's going caveman. Um, and this caveman, okay, he leeches the opponent's health when touch, so he has life drain. Mm, so, okay, we've got some good things. Now you'd think, okay, that might be the end of it. Now somebody's got to figure out who wins. <laughs> it gets better. The ref then calls out a direction, either left or right. And everyone then gets to play one additional black card on the player to that side. So I'm going to say left. So this person gets to play an additional black card to the player on their left. This is when it gets a little hairy. Because you're generally going to be trying to give them your weakness cards not your strength cards. I don't want the marshmallow man uh, who throws spears to also have, you know, fire breath or something. I want him to, you know, be made of kittens or something. So let's look and see what's in here. Um, 
Oh, okay. Uh, so Marshmallow Man now also thinks that his opponent, thinks Abraham Lincoln, is his or her parent. That will make it much more difficult for him to fight. So now this guy has to do the same thing, and he's going left. So this caveman is now... <laughs> the caveman is now a pacifist. Um, so he's going to be less likely to want to touch people uh, if he's a pacifist. And then, uh, so the person who played the caveman has to put something on Canada. Okay, ironically, this person has the card wearing skis, which seems like, you know, would not be the best thing, but for Canadians, I'm not going to give them the benefit of wearing skis. Um, so, oh, they can't see. <laughs> so they can read minds, but they can't see. <laughs> so now as the ref, I have to choose which of these opponents has a chance to beat Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and this is a point where everyone throws in their argument as to why their character should be the one to win. Or why somebody else's character would be the one that can't possibly win. I'm, I'm thinking that a caveman who is a pacifist it's just he's not going to, he has this ability where he, you know, he, maybe he accidentally can touch Abraham Lincoln, but Abraham Lincoln is throwing knives and frost breathing. There's no way. I think the caveman's out, so I'm, he's, he's out of this one. Um, Canada can read minds. That's very powerful. It's going to know where the knives are going to be thrown. It's going to know where the frost breath is going to be, but it can't see Abraham Lincoln. Uh, so it's just all going to be by feel. Um, I'm not sure about that one. I think the Marshmallow Man is going to have too hard of a time thinking that Abraham Lincoln is, uh, is his father and is not going to want to kill him. So I think that's going to, that's going to take him out, leaving the unlikely Canada as the victor in this game. So the ref declares the winner. The winner is Canada. And Canada gets to take Abraham Lincoln, or Canada, <laughs> the person who played Canada, not Canada themselves, the person who played Canada gets to take Abraham Lincoln as a victory card that they put off to, side, to the side and keep that will then count at the end of the game if you decide that you want to score a winner. You don't necessarily have to. And then all of these cards would get uh, discarded. Then everyone would draw back up. They, everyone would, would draw, except for the ref, would draw a, uh, a fighter. And they would draw two black cards so that they're back up to their strength. And then you would repeat that as long as you want to um, because it's an open-ended party game. So the game is funny enough anyways. Um, and when people start throwing in those weaknesses like you know, putting somebody in a hamster ball or putting them on ice skates or whatever, it just takes the game to a whole new level and everybody just will, will have, I think, a really good time playing this game. I can't say for sure because I haven't played it yet. I just op literally opened the box today. Um, but I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's not, like I say, this, this will appeal probably to more people than Cards Against Humanity um, because as much as I love Cards Against Humanity, it can be quite offensive, uh, which is not a problem for me personally, but um, it definitely would be a problem for some people that I play with and some of my friends. Uh, so I think that this is something that would be more appealing to a wider audience. There are also some alternate basic rules, of course. Um, there's some things where you can play where you take, for, you play for serious people, where you take out all of the cards that are, that are weaknesses, although you could argue that some of the cards that are weaknesses are actually strengths. That would be hard to do. Um, you could also play uh, a gladiator's version where there's no ref and everyone just has to argue it out and make a decision. Um, you could also play pacifists, <laughs> which is where you choose the funniest one. Instead of choosing the one that you think would actually win, you choose uh, the, the, the funniest uh, card that you can. And the good news is that there are already expansions to this game as well. Um, I've, I, I, made, I made the list so I can let you guys know. 
Uh, there's an orange expansion that's got a bunch of geeky cards in it. There's a red expansion that has a bunch of offensive cards in it. If you want to go the Cards Against Humanity route, I suggest you know your audience before you use that deck. Um, uh, the blue expansion adds locations. Uh, I don't know how that works, but it adds locations. Purple um, adds scenarios. Again, I don't know how that works, but it it does add it adds scenarios, so it spices up the atmosphere in which these combats are taking place. Uh, the green expansion is kid friendly, so fairy tales and stuff like that. Um, and the gray box is a hero machine. It has uh, different descriptive words in it that you put together to create like big giant henchmen or whatever to as your fighter so it, it adds um another dimension to creating your 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 fighting champions uh of course me being me i got the geeky expansion which has pie on it not real pie that would be yummy i would eat the box but has pie on it and it has some pretty uh spectacular cards in it I, I just kind of looked through it earlier, um, but yeah, some, I mean, some of the, the heroes, like Bowser is a hero, and you've got, you know, Dungeon Master, and Wraith, Link, um, you pick any fantasy character, that would be interesting, Monk, Medusa, you got the Kraken in here, Zeus, all sorts of, uh, a dancing paper clip with googly eyes, that's, funny um so oh a larper that'd be great uh it would i hope you wouldn't arm them with a foam sword uh that would be difficult and then it has uh these great abilities like is just cosplaying oh is a stark that's a great one um i know it has uh wearing a red shirt is one of them and uh oh, armed with a blunderbuss that seems useful um yeah is in beta. Di oh, dying of dysentery. Beautiful. Wonderful throwback reference uh, to uh, the days of yore. So the geeky pack just adds uh, some new black cards and some new white cards to make your deck a little bit geekier in case playing games wasn't geeky enough for you. Um, but I think this game is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to get a group of people over here to play it. I really just wanted to make a video to show you this game. Um, the website is superfightgame.com and you can pre-order the third printing there if you're lucky. Um, hopefully you won't have to wait for the fourth printing because this game is selling like hotcakes. I wonder if that's one of the cards in here. Likes hotcakes. In any case, thanks for visiting the Dragon Table. I'll see you next time.